Hello, I am Squid of Love. Welcome back. In this video, we're gonna take another look at the Federal Dropship for the first time actually after it had some of its stats changed, something that happened quite a while back, and see if it is still good in the different activities of Elite Dangerous and what are its capabilities like this. The major change that happened to the Federal Dropship is the fact that you now require the third rank of the Federal Navy in order to get yourself a Federal Dropship, the rank of Midshipman, and it is much easier to get one than it used to be before when you had to have the 7th rank of the Federal Navy, that of Ensign. Also, it is slightly faster than it used to be, but the difference is pretty much insignificant. Its speed can go up to 182 meters per second, while its boost speed can go up to 304 meters per second. Unfortunately, the maneuverability is quite low at level 2. The value of the shields is at 104, while the value of the armor has been increased to 540. The Federal Dropship can be equipped with a power plant of class 6, thrusters class 6, a frameship drive of class 5, life support 5, a power distributor of class 6, and sensors of class 4, and it has a fuel tank of capacity 16. With these modules equipped, the best modules it can be equipped with, its available power is at 25.20, which is quite decent, very good actually. And the jump range is at 16.92 light years. Not the best, not that bad either. It is a quite heavy ship, and we can see this from its mass at 728 tons. It has 7 internal compartments, of which 1 class 6, 2 class 5, 1 class 4, 2 class 3, and 1 class 2. As for the hard points, it has 5 hard points, 1 large, 4 medium that will allow us to create some very nice combinations of weapons, quite strong weapons thanks to the very good available power it has as well, and 4 utility mounts that will help us equip it with defensive modules and everything else that we're gonna need. So let's go ahead now and start taking a look at the capabilities of the Federal Dropship in the different activities of Elite Dangerous, see if something has changed from before, we're gonna start with trading and equip all of the internal compartments with cargo racks. With only cargo racks equipped, our Federal Dropship has a cargo capacity, a maximum cargo capacity of 164 tons, and if we equip the lowest class of shield generator it can be equipped with, then with an A4 shield generator we can have a maximum cargo capacity of 148 tons, and although it is obvious that it is not the best option for pure trading, it is not the best trading vessel out there, we could create some kind of an arm freighter and move from one station to another delivering goods while having extra protection. And the same applies in mining, we can equip it with class 2 mining ledgers, 2 class 2 mining ledgers or more if we want, we don't really have to. Have a refinery with up to 8 bins, collector limit controller, prospector limit controller, our seed generator of A4, and a car capacity of 128 tons which is quite decent for mining. And of course we can add some weapons and some more defense modules on the utility mounts and help protect even better against pirates and other NPC. Of course, the maneuverability, the low level of maneuverability, might create some problems while navigating in asteroid fields, but in general, it is not that bad of an option for mining as well. But what about its long range traveling capabilities? It is obvious that because of the high mass it has, it's gonna be a bit problematic, it's going to be not the best option, obviously, for that kind of activity. Our jump range is not gonna be the best. Let's go ahead and take a look. We are gonna start with rare goods trading and general. The ability it has to travel from a system to another far away system. We don't really need to have everything equipped with cargo racks, so this is why we have only equipped the internal compartments of class 6 and class 5 with cargo racks, and this will give us a cargo capacity of 128 tons, which is more than enough for air goods trading, or in general transferring goods from one station to another far away. A seed generator is necessary if we want to protect ourselves. And a fuel scoop of course is necessary, unfortunately like this we can only equip an A3 fuel scoop that will be a bit problematic when we want to replenish our fuel, it will take us some time. Everything else is downgraded, nothing else is equipped, only a jump launcher and a hint shield launcher in the utility mounts, and like this our latent jump range is not that bad actually, at 15.74 light years, so it could be used as a rare goods trading vessel or long range smuggling, the problem is the fuel tank is at capacity 16 and the fuel scoop that we can only use an A3 if we don't want to sacrifice more cargo. 
like this it will take us a while to reach our destination of course we could remove one of the cargo racks and uh, replace it with a fuel tank, an extra fuel tank or a better fuel scoop and equip the other internal commandments with cargo racks but this is the best configuration if you want to do some rare goods trading and similar activities as for exploration, thanks to the number of internal compartments it has, we can equip it with all the necessary modules, advanced cover scanner, detailed surface scanner, a planetary vehicle hangar if you want to land on the surface of the planet and do some uh, land exploration, seed generator of D4, autofill maintenance unit and a very good fuel scoop of V6 that will help us replenish our fuel even faster. Our jump rate is at 18.45 light years, which is not the best for exploration, but it is not that bad either. So if you really want to go out there and explore with a Federal dropship, you can do it. Nothing can stop you. You won't really have any problem. And of course, we still have an internal compartment left, and we can place over there an extra fuel tank, eliminating the problem of uh, the small capacity of our existing fuel tank. I have equipped four hitchin latches on the utility mouse. These are the main modules that we are going to need for exploration. And of course, you can go and equip weapons on the hard points and have extra protection in case something happens. Not a bad option for exploration either. In general, it is not the best option for any activity we have seen so far, but it is not a bad option as well. So if you really want to take a federal dropship and use it in any kind of activity, trading, rare goods trading, exploration, mining or long range smuggling, you can do it, it is not that bad of an option. Let's go ahead and take a good look at its command capabilities, give it a nice command loadout and see what it can do against some enemies. The dropship like I mentioned before has 5 hard points, 1 large and 4 medium and this is giving us the opportunity to create some very interesting weapon combinations, I have chosen this one over here. One large gimbal beam laser and four medium gimbal multi cannons. I don't have any shield booster equipped on the utility mounts. Two chaff launchers and two hitchin launchers instead. And this is because our base armor is quite strong, it's quite good. So we can build a loadout around this base armor, make an even stronger armor and go out like this. Only a bi wheel shield generator on the class 6 in the compartment. But we're not really gonna focus on the shield, we're gonna focus on the armor. And this is why every internal compartment, every other internal compartment is equipped with high response packages and of course also a military grade composite that will give us an even stronger armor. This loadout has obviously an impact on our speed, it will have on our speed and on our jump range. Our jump range like this is only at 12.51 light years. So let's go ahead and take a look at its speed and of course its capabilities in combat. So let's get out of here, let's put 4 pips on our engines and see what is our speed. It's not gonna be very fast, that's for sure. Our normal speed is at around 194, 195 only. Yeah, definitely not very fast. If we boost... 323 is slightly better. 325. Let's go ahead and try against this Imperial Clipper, deadly Imperial Clipper. Let's start the attack and see how good is our Federal Dropship against this Clipper. Well, the fire power is quite good with one large and five medium hard points. If we can continue attacking it, then we will have absolutely no problem to destroy it. The obvious problem with the dropship is the speed. Everything can escape from it at uh, this speed. We can uh, put some more pips on the engine and try to get closer. The power plant is down to 25%. Yeah, it's not attacking back, unfortunately. Let's put some more power on our weapons. Although it's pretty much dead. Let's boost, get closer. Our enemies can try to escape. That's the major drawback of the dropship and of course this loadout. It's a heavy ship, it's a heavy loadout, so everything can escape. It's dead. It was quite easy. 
Well, we had other NPC helping. And here is our next target. Let's go after this python. Let's see how fast we can destroy it. I don't think we're gonna have problem. NPC have joined again. Let's wait for the chaff to go away. We didn't have to use our chaff. We didn't have to use anything. Any defensive module so far. Yeah, you're gonna die quite fast. We can totally ignore our shields and focus on our weapons, focus on our engines. And of course, if we were to lose the shields, we could rely on our armor. Let's uh, just do that. Target shields offline. And see how good we are in shield running. This is also why we have heat sinks. Let's use one. Let's put some power on the engines and continue like this. It is not a bad option for silent running combat, as you can see. Yeah, something crashed on us. Unfortunately, NPC are not the brightest. Let's use more hitching. Let's use tough lancer. A very nice option for silent running combat as well. And the python is dead. It may not be a fast vessel, it may not be the best option for hunting down enemies. We don't really need to continue running silently. The Python is dead. But it can be a very nice armored ship that uh, can utilize silent running and do some serious damage. Obviously the speed and the jump rates are gonna be a big problem if you try to do some piracy with a federal dropship and this is because everything will be able to escape from you. We do have enough internal compartments to equip all the necessary modules for piracy, hatchbreak element controller, collector element controller, frame seat drive interdictor, a cargo rack with capacity 32 or more if you want, and of course a cargo scanner of D0, but people, your targets, are going to be able to escape very easily. So it might be better to use the feather dropship in a wing with other players. It will give you more flexibility, it will give you better chances to achieve your goal. This was the feather dropship, a nice, a decent option for pretty much every activity in Elite Dangerous and can be a very nice armored combat vessel. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more. Thank you for joining me, I'm Skidoblav and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.